So for instance, you all know that we hired a new HR director. She didn't start until June. So we only put in the budget half a year's salary. So this year, when she gets paid a full amount, we have to bump that back up to the full year's salary, right? So we, any prorated amount were annualized. We then went through and looked at our, of our revenue trends and adjusted them uh, for what was happening in 17. And any specific large expenses, we would go uh, and look at that number and that trend. So for instance, we spend a lot of money on the jail bill. It's about a half a million dollar line item um, to house our prisoners. So we looked at that was going to go over, go under, how that was going to be. We also took a look at uh, public defenders. We spend a lot of money on public defenders. Uh, this year is going to go thirty, forty thousand dollars over budget. Uh, so we adjusted it up to where it needed to be. But the biggest piece is there's no capital improvement program, and there's no contribution to reserves in this budget. In this number we're about to give you. So that is, there's no buying uh, any any new squad cars. There's no purchasing any new ambulances. Um, there's no additional roads or bridges getting fixed other than what was already scheduled for maintenance. So there's no capital improvement program this year. Um, and and this, there's no finalized budget. That's in, in the number that we got to. And no contribution to reserves. So right now we have reserves of about $1.3 million. That's of all of our reserves together. Um, and that only started two years ago. So it's actually a pretty good number to have. But we really want to have about six months worth of operating expenses. So the general fund alone has about a $5 million uh, uh, budget. So we need about $2.5 million in that fund just for the general fund. If you do, do the whole county, it's closer to 10, so we need about $5 million. So I say we're about 20% of the way where we need to be with reserves. They're doing a lot of pressure to pull back out of those reserves since we have them right now. But this year, the general fund had a balance of negative half a million dollars in August, I want to say, maybe it was July. No, no property tax revenue come in yet, right? That only comes in twice a year, near the end of the year quarters three and quarters four. So through spring and summer, we're really pretty tight there. If we would not have had a million dollars in reserves, we wouldn't, our checks wouldn't have cleared. We would have had to do mass layoffs. Is that uh, money helping uh, in a separate account, that gold reserve, or then in your general? It is in, so what we've done is, we do fund accounting to county. Um, and a lot of governments do fund accounting, and they, they should do fund accounting. So what that means is, we have funds lined up, and then we have checking accounts lined up. And you could have money, in one fund in multiple checking accounts, and you could have money in one checking account in multiple funds. Does that make sense? So you can have negatives in some of, uh, some of your accounts and, and you're okay. I mean, the money's in the bank. Precisely. That's what we've done is we've consolidated what you so, see. But your, your reserves is in that part. It is, yeah. So, so basically you can work off of that thing. We're drawing off those reserves during the year okay. for cash flow purposes. And that works so long as by the end of the year, you're in the black. If you go red, you have a problem. Then. So like you got to get back. So if you to don't have anything scheduled going those reserved on a monthly basis or mm -hmm. an annual basis, then nope. The, those will be budgeted each year's budget, and if there's any surplus at the end of the year, then historically we've taken the surplus and put it into the reserves. Is there is there some uh, entity that requires you to put so much in reserve or, or have so much in your reserves mm -hmm. before you quit quit doing that or not? No, we're not required by. There's nothing in, in state law that requires it um, to contribute or to stop contributing to it, but there are. We should follow, it's called GASB, the Government Accounting Standards Board, and there's also GAAP, which is Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. And those both recommend that we have about six months worth of operating revenue um, in our reserves. They just, it's just a recommendation, it's not a... Just a recommendation. Okay. Just a recommendation. That's kind of the guiding uh, principle. Now, you can make an argument that we should have more or less, or each individual entity should have more or less. In the case of Union County, being in the state of Illinois, where we get a lot of our revenue from, we actually probably should have more than average because you never know when the state's gonna come through and reduce what they're sending you, which we're gonna find out happened this year. That's causing part of our problem for this year. As they're reducing what they're paying or they're delaying what they're paying, and that's, again, why we draw more on our reserves. Make okay. sense? Okay. So, no additional contributions to reserves, uh, no capital group program. So, you look at some of our squad cars, they need to be replaced. You look at some of our highway department trucks, desperately need to be replaced. None of them getting replaced. Not, not at this point. There's been some work done since this presentation was given. The result of all that was that we had a $423,000 deficit. Now, that doesn't mean that we didn't have the money at the end of the year. That means that if you budget the expenses the way that we, were, that we did last year, and we look at what we expect our revenues to be this year, you would end next year, FY, you'd end FY18 with $423,000 deficit. So clearly, some pretty significant changes need to be made to make sure we get a budget that was in line. Um, I'm going to get to it, but 
This is abnormally high, but there's always, every year, about a $200,000 deficit. So, but we'll get to that. <clears throat> Top offenders. This has been uh, internally within the courthouse and probably on social media. People don't like this term offenders. I think we're all level-headed enough that this doesn't mean that these are bad things or bad people. These are things that just affected the budget, right? So, clearly health insurance went up 15%, $38,000 increase. Doesn't mean we need to get rid of health insurance. Doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It just means that it caused the, uh, the deficit in this situation. Um, we have raises in place. It doesn't mean that people don't deserve raises. It doesn't mean that these aren't important jobs. It just means that that's part of the cause of the deficit for this year. There's a change <coughs> year over year. If we look through these, and I know this is small for people in the back, and we'll make this available. Actually, it is available already, isn't it, probably on the website? I'll read off most of these. Now, this list goes longer, um, and, and everything that's on this list right now that you see actually totals $600,000 worth of negative changes. So there's actually about $200,000 worth of positive changes here, too, below. But I see that the top, everything above $10,000. The biggest hit this year is a 10% reduction in the state income tax from the state of Illinois. That was a change made in this year's budget. Um, they reduced what they're sending on to the counties by 10%. That's going to be about a $121,000 hit to Union County. So let's take a moment and let's shake our fists and bemoan the state of Illinois. <laughs> that said, if we take that off, we still have $500,000 worth of things that are causing our deficit that is internal. So, yes, it's making the situation worse this year than it usually is, but it is not causing the problem. It is just a contributing factor to a problem that already existed. All right? So, a few other ones, and we'll run through them relatively quickly. Um, we needed to levy more for IMRF this year because we haven't been levying it up and we've been transferring money out of the general fund. So, in our budget scenario, we are lowering the tax levy for the general fund and levying more for IMRF to make it really look the way it's supposed to look. Um, transfers into revenue stamps. So that transfer for revenue stamps hadn't been made in about a decade or so. So it's just been pooling in an account. This is a consistent problem in the county where we have accounts, we let money pool here, and we don't let it flow into the general fund for the purpose that it's meant for, I guess, its real purpose. Um, so they made a contribution of about the last decade's amount, so about $50,000. So this year, we should only anticipate to get about $5,000 a year. That's a $50,000 hit. We used it to balance the budget last year, but we don't really have it, right? So this is, this is a consistent thing that the state of Illinois does too. They take one-time revenues, and they don't, don't use them for one-time expenses. They use them for ongoing programs. So your expenses go up, your revenues are stagnant. It's a trade we're going to see. Uh, $50,000 for compensated absences. So we don't have enough in our reserve fund for compensated absences. That's a specialized reserve fund. Um, not enough to cover people that are eligible to retire in the next five years. As you might guess, a lot of this is a lot of our employees are coming, kind of come and go in waves. We don't have a lot of turnover all the time, but when we do, it's a lot of people go and then you hire the next group that stays in for 30 years, and they retire in 30 years later. You do the next same thing. So we need to transfer. We have to make about fifty thousand dollars. This is to pay or pay time off. So our employees in their uh, in the collective bargaining units. Uh, they have paid time off, the cash value, and they're sick in vacation days. Vacation days is everywhere, but they have cash value of sick days. So we have to put money in uh, reserve for that. Social Security was $45,000, so it's the same thing as IMRF. We weren't levying enough, so we had to transfer, uh, change the levies around. Health insurance, we found out that that's not estimated anymore. We did get a 15% increase. That's going to cost $38,000. The Child Support Fund uh, is a special fund held by the circuit clerks and has a specialized purpose, and they're supposed to transfer $30,000 to cover some employees that are doing some employee work. This is for past years. Um, that's going to happen once. We can't get it in future years the same. It's much like the contribution from revenue stamps. Arrestee medical, that's paying for the medical bills of people that you arrest. So we have to, if, if they're injured while they're in our custody or develop an illness during, in our custody, or hasn't been diagnosed previously, you got to pay for cool teeth, you got to pay for um, all sorts of stuff, right? So a lot of medications. If you are addicted to drugs, then you, you get the medicine that you need for that addiction. And that is going $30,000 over budget this year. Actually, it's more than that. We're paying for some past years. Um, so we needed to up that. We talked about the prorates, proration of the human uh, resource manager's salary. Uh, that was six months. We had to double it. Um, state grants games fees. That's video gaming tax. The portion that we get, 
the FY17 budget overstated that because in 16 they got 18 payments because the state was delayed in paying us. So they based the budget off of 18 payments instead of the 12 that we'll actually get. Court of Public Defenders we talked about, state's, Assistant State's Attorney was six months, so we had to double it, um, prorate it. We got a double payment for the city uh, share of animal control. Right? The cities all contribute to the county for animal control. They paid twice, some of the cities paid twice in 17. They kept it in the budget. Well, nope, you're only going to get it once, so you got to take it back out of the budget. Raises, uh, some transfers you need to make, a 2% increase in the detention bill, uh, yada, yada, yada. This is how it happened. So none of these things you look at and say, well, that's a, well, there may be a few in there, but nothing really looking and say, that's a bad thing. These are just things that happen in organizations. Health insurance just goes up. Sometimes you just have to pay people more. You potentially have to pay good people more. I think most of us are pretty pleased with our, uh, with our police service in Union County. Um, I certainly think we're all pleased with what's happening with our, with our 911 people that have answered the phone call, right? Um, we want to have that localized. It costs money, so you have to pay them more. But you have to have revenues to cover it. So, as you can see, we had some revenues that weren't coming through. So how do we fix this? So any option is going to fix it. Um, is going to take some fundamental restructuring of the county government. So what we've been doing, not because anybody's bad, but just because of the way it happens, we've been kicking the can down the road the same way the state of Illinois did. I talked about taking one-time revenues and using them to pay for ongoing expenses. That just doesn't work. So I keep doing this to everybody. You probably see me walk around town doing it. I do it so much. But when your expenses go up 10 to 15, 20% and your revenues are stagnant, when you hit this point, you're out of money. So what we do every year is we get past it. We get up to this point. So we cut enough to get back to our revenue line. But the next year, you have to make up that same difference, plus your expenses went up even greater. So now you get to cover double, and you got to cut that much more out. <laughs> so we have slashed and slashed and slashed for years travel lines and office supply lines. This year, the treasurer's office, they, my staff came to me and said, we need to send out our friend in your life reminder emails. Now we're out of envelopes. I said, well, let me go look at my budget to see if I have enough to buy envelopes. Or to the $65 box of envelopes, but I was down to $200 in my house supply line. So, which is fine. It needs to be tight. That's good. We've cut those pretty much where they need to be. Um, you can't take $500 more and plug a $400,000 budget gap. So we're going to have to do some fundamental restructuring. That means right-sizing. People don't like that term, but it may mean that you have to reallocate, reallocate resources. If we think the most important things, I will give you my opinion, the most important things that you look for in a county government good roads, police service, so your safety, and in this case, I'd say our ambulance service. We have a great ambulance service, um, and it's something that people want here. That's where people are gonna look out and say, that's what our county government's supposed to do. People don't care about the treasurer's office. They just, you wanna make sure it's good, but nobody goes there, wakes up in the morning and say, boy, I'm just, I'm really glad that that treasurer's office is doing a good job. They just don't do it. We don't need a Lamborghini uh, treasurer's office. A Ford is just fine. Making sure the money's where it needs to be and the money's being saved the way it needs to be saved. So, we're going to have to fundamentally restructure how we do some things. It means looking up some of our contracts. It means uh, with the jail bill. Is there a better place to go? Maybe there isn't, but look it, look it up. See if there's a better way to do it. Are there ways to um, invest in things that are going to pay off in the future? Maybe so. Second of all, we're going to designate authority to make important decisions to those who have been identified as qualified. Basically, there are a lot of important decisions. We're a small little county, but we have millions of dollars, and we do a lot of important things for a lot of important people, right? We have 17,000 people here that need the services done. You have to have qualified people making the decisions about what we're doing. If some of the contracts we're entering are not good, then we need to not let those people make those contract decisions anymore. Um, one of the great things about democracy is you always have a new election, right? There's always a new election coming. You can always have new people making decisions. They can always hire new people to make decisions. And it's an important thing to, to remember that we can do. We're not locked into anything. We have productive people here. We have some really good staff people. Um, those really good ones are underpaid, and it's the result of allocating money to places that are less efficient, right? So there, there are some employees that probably don't do as much as some other employees. There are some uh, some pr uh, products, <coughs> some, not products, some processes, I should say, or some services we provide that are inefficient and not not running the way that they should change those and reallocate to places that are more productive. And uh, any option to provide long-term revenue assurance. So that's a problem with the county, right? So if you want to, government, if you want to raise revenue, it means raising taxes generally. Well, we're limited to what we can raise taxes. 
thankfully. I don't think that the, when you say that we need to redo our government, it doesn't have to be raising taxes every time. But we do have limited ways to raise money. One is the county highway can do some services for people and charge money. That hasn't always gone very well here recently. One is the ambulance service. They can charge money for services uh, that are provided. I'm not sure how that's going to go, but it's something to take a look at. One we talked about a lot is, is dispatch. If you can dis do dispatching for other entities, we already have it. If we can do it for more and charge money, that's money to offset our costs. You spend about between six and seven hundred thousand dollars a year on dispatch. It's inherently inefficient. It's a great service and it's one you have to have, but just because we're small, we're going to be inefficient automatically. Um, but we're going to be way more efficient than, say, Allen or Pulaski County, or even smaller uh, Oak County. These places, if they're going to set up 24 7, it's going to be way more inefficient than we are even. So, can we help two entities by doing it ourselves? So there's a reason, though, that we must overcome a $200,000 deficit every year. I think this is the first year I talked to the county board and mentioned to them, and, and really got them to understand that we have the deficit every year. We talked about it before. We say every year, just wait. When you get when you get working on the budget, you're going to get to a point where you look up and say, oh, we've got to cut $200,000 out. And they always say, well, ground and level. This year, we really tried to make it a point. You have to cut $200,000 every year. Why? Why is that happening? Well, let's think about it. The reason is because the cuts we're making, we did our cross, right? But the cuts we're making get us down to a balanced budget that year, but it doesn't do anything to, do, to fix it for the next year, or the next year, or 10 years from now. We're only trying to get the payday. We're only trying to get the Friday. Um, costs continue to increase at a rate greater than our stagnant economy. We'll talk about this. The whole point we're here today is to talk about the stagnant economy, and I'll get to it. Um, so fundamental changes to our strategy and structure are going to be necessary if we're going to provide the services that we need to provide and, uh, to our people. So, I've talked about this. This is kind of an addition to this presentation. I've talked and talked and talked about our stagnant economy, and I thought, I need to show that we have a stagnant economy. So, I went through and looked at sales tax revenues of Union County and our biggest, so Jones, Romana, I think just so, and Cobden. Um, and then I looked at similar sized entities, so counties and cities. So we have Anna Cobden, Harrisburg, Jonesboro, Metropolis, Nashville, Massac County, Saline County, Union County, and Washington County. Those are all counties that are about the same size, and they have one major city. I'm counting Anna and Jonesboro as one major city here, because really, uh, really they are. And this is a view of what their sales tax revenues, which is not, it's not going to show you the entire uh, economy, it's not going to show you the GDP, if you will, of Union County, but it's a, it's, it's a good indicator, one indicator of our economy. Um, and what you see here overall is a lot of flat lines. This is over an 11 year period. We start over here in 2005, 2006, because this goes from um, April through March, or maybe May through April. May through April each year is how the state does it. And it ends in 2015, 2016. A lot of flat lines. At the top, you actually see Harrisburg uh, is the green line, and Saline County is the pink line at the very top. You see they've grown. Uh, we can talk about why if you, if you want. Uh, we see Anna here is this big blue line. Nashville is the orange line that you can see increases. Um, Metropolis is the red line. The light blue is Union County right here. And let's see, Washington County is just below. Massac County had a big spike there near the end. And the bottom two are Cobb and Jonesboro, which makes sense because it's the smallest entities. That's why they're small. But what I want to call your attention to is the flatness. It's hard to really see these numbers, though. Um, so what I did is I wanted to look at the, the total growth for the last for these 11 years, from 15 back to 2005. Here's what these numbers look like. So sales tax revenues from 2006 to 2016. The total gain is how much in 2015 and 16 they, these entities received from the state government from sales tax revenues um, versus what they got in 2006. Massac County gained half a million dollars during that 11 year period. Union County gained $37,000 over 11 years. And that's not one year over one year. That's not growing $30,000 a year. That's $37,000 more in 15 than you had in 2006. Cobb actually lost. Now that's a little bit misleading. Um, they had some gains earlier. But basically, I would say they were just stagnant. Jonesboro was stagnant. Um, the total gain percentage is probably the best thing to look at, right? So I've color coded it, highest and lowest. Red is generally bad, and in this case it is. Green is generally good. Massac County grew 209%. Now we can say it's probably because of the uh, casino, right? Okay, but they have it and we don't. 
right? You can say, Nashville, well, they're closer to St. Louis than we are, or they've got an interstate. Well, we have an interstate too, right? Um, Harrisburg, why do they grow? Uh, 13? Well, we have 51. Um, Metropolis grew some, obviously good casino, Washington County, but Anna grew 16% over 11 years. That's about 1.1%. It's kind of Soviet era, Soviet block era growth right there. Union County grew 5% over 11 years, half a point a year, less than half a point a year. And again, Calvin and Jonesboro were just basically zero. Just the same as they were in, in 2016 uh, as they were in 2006. I would remind you that when you're treading water, right, you're, you're actually moving up a little bit and you move down a little bit. You're never just flat. If you either move up a little bit or you move down a little bit. And that means that other people are moving past you the whole time, right? So you move up a little bit, that's good, but then you move back a little bit and they're gaining on you. So uh, if you're stagnant, you're actually losing ground. To that point about they have things that we don't have, that's why I chose these places though, right? Um, do you think Washington County would like to have the wine trail? Yeah, probably so. Um, do you think, I don't know, Metro Harrisburg maybe? Harrisburg has no interstates, if I'm thinking, right? Right? Yeah, no interstates. Union County has 57, 51, 146, and 127. They've got things that we don't have. We have things that they don't have. There's something else. There's something else missing here. So, opportunity. This, again, this presentation was originally uh, created to present to the county board. There's an opportunity for change. We have $9.7 million of controllable revenue for FY18. Now, I would contend that $9.7 million is plenty to have a sufficient government. It's not going to buy you the Lamborghini government, but it can probably buy you a Ford government. It's not a jalopy government, right? Now, if you want some things that are a Lamborghini style, you can probably afford that, but it means that other things are going to really go down then, right? So it's all about allocating your resources. This is about $559,000, $560,000 per thousand residents. So if you can think about you and your 999 closest friends, the county government alone, forget the cities, the county government alone can spend $560,000 on you guys to provide your services. There's a difference though between the government that you want and the government that you can afford. Doesn't mean our government has to be bad, but it may not be that Lamborghini government um, that, we, that we've all thought about. I was just talking about it with Raleigh before we talked today, and part of this is to, to get to where you want in life, sometimes you have to live below your means for a little bit of time to save up to be where you want to be in the future, right? So my, my wife and I, we don't spend all of our money every month. Uh, we pull some back and put it in retirement because we know that someday to get to where we want to go, we're going to have to have some retirement. We also want to buy a little bit nicer car, maybe want to invest in a bigger house someday, or, or maybe we want to, I really want to open a business. That's really what we want to do. So we're putting a little bit of money <coughs> aside for that. We're living below our means. We could blow it all out and spend every dime, but we don't. We pull a little bit back because we want a better future at some point. That's going to be the challenge for our local governments. We spend every dime. Now, we have a surplus. We talked about earlier. We put it in the reserve fund. Um, we may budget a little bit in reserve. And the line, and the line item for the last 10 years for economic development has been $5,000 in the county budget. Out of roughly $10 million, $5,000 for economic <coughs> development. I argue that is like saying you need a militia and you buy 5,000 bayonets. <laughs> it's completely irrelevant. So, the county government's going to have to start giving more money. The, c the city of Indiana is probably going to start giving more money. All of our cities are. The banks are probably going to start giving more money. Raising $500 a pop isn't going to get it done. There's going to be a concerted effort getting all the minds that care about it and can think about it, all the best minds you can and passion minds together and come up with a plan because we're going to have to start living below our means for a little bit to have a better future. So much of, of I've talked, you've probably heard me say this before about this courthouse. I love this courthouse and it is spectacular. You look, remember the old one, it was not spectacular. You walked in and the product was going to match that building. We have a building now and our product needs to match the building we have. I think of it a lot as a kind of a beacon for what we can do in Union County. We went out, we passed a 1% sales tax to pay for this. 40% of this government, of this courthouse is going to be uh, paid for by people who live outside of the county. By outside of Union County. It's my phone. It's buzzing my arm. It's really bothering me. 40% um, of this courthouse is going to be paid for people that live outside of our county. That's fantastic. But it's something that we did. 
We said this is important to us to pass a sales tax. I'm not a big tax guy. But in this case, it made sense to pay for it. And we have this, this beacon of what we can accomplish. And it's the, re the responsibility of everyone that works here, but even the people from the public that come in here to stand in it and look outside at our 17,000 people and what we can do and what we must do for them. Way too often, far too often, in fact, almost entirely, the view is inside. We stand in this building and we don't look out those windows. We look inside at how do we maintain our status quo. Well, the status quo grew 5% in 11 years. Status quo isn't bringing new jobs in. It's not, it's, not, uh, it's not providing a better future for your kids, for your grandkids, for that next generation. So at some point, we have to decide, we draw a line that's saying, are we going to follow the path of the counties to the south of us that are just kind of crumbling off and washing away in the Mississippi? Or are we going to draw a line here and say, it's not coming up to Union County. We're going to do something different. I challenge us now to do that. And part of what UC, 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 UCDC needs to do is start showing up in board meetings. Have a presence. Because right now, these five people, they don't hear. It's not that they don't necessarily want to do these things, but they don't hear from the public that this is what they want. The Chamber of Commerce needs to have two people here. Come out and say, voice your opinion. This is the thing that we think is important. We think this is going to be better for our future. Um, I think that UCDC and the Chamber need to have town hall meetings. You talked about finding out from the public, knocking doors, asking what they want. Let's have a town hall meeting. Let's get everybody together and let them give input. What do we think our future needs to look like? What do we want Canada to look like, right? What's our 10-year plan? What's our, what's our two-year plan? What's our, what's our 5th year plan? What is the future of Anna going to be? What's the future of Union County going to be? Um, and start making a plan to get there. So that's all I have. Question. Yeah. Uh, uh, I believe you said the 1% sales tax was, uh, was approved uh, for the new courthouse. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is it taking all of that 1% to pay the, the lien or the you know, the uh, mortgage on this, or is there any excess, or we have to make that up with the other income? You know, so, no property tax dollars are being used to pay for the courthouse, right? So, there's no other makeup is, is being used. But it's that 1%, but I'm, what I'm asking it's the, of that 1%. There's no excess. There's no excess. Because but, fact, it's, but is it exactly that amount? Or, no. Or, is it up, or, we, or we have to make up some? It's actually outpacing where we need to be. So, that 1% sales tax is, is actually bringing in more, because we were really conservative. Uh, Tyler, Evans did the heavy lifting on structuring this uh, bond payment structure. And it was back in 2009, 2010. And he, it was structured to where we anticipated that whatever was coming in was going to outpace what was needed to pay off. But the thing is, that there's no guarantees that, that what that 1% is going to generate it, does it? I mean, you know, in 2009, whenever you did this, there was no guarantee that that 1% was going to, uh, was going to pay the total amount of our repayment. Certainly. So, so you don't know for sure whether it is or isn't. Uh, it could be excess well, we know some years is. or less and, and not enough another year. I don't know. I mean, that's kind of what I'm asking. We know that it is right now. Cause I know, huh? We know that it is right now because I look what come in and I know what the bill is going to be. Well, that's good. I mean, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, it's exceeding. It, it's, it's surpassing where we are. So we'll be able to pay off the, the bonds early. We're not going to be able to. We will be we able will. to. Well, we will be able to. So, but it is dedicated. It can only go to pay. And how many years is that for? It was a 30-year loan. 30, well, it's not too bad. Yeah, not what the, the amount is, you know. Yep. And the thing about it is that 1% will still be there after that, too, for whatever purpose. No, it expires. It expires. So that we will have to decrease the sales tax that yeah. now? You, you know, you saw this decrease. We'll probably the increase it before then, though. <laughs> you didn't how much you can increase it, but actually you saw the decrease in your rate uh, the last two years from the county. Now, maybe your whole tax bill didn't go down because maybe other ones went up, but the county actually, so we restructured uh, our our liability insurance program. We were, we were paying for that with bonds, and then we were buying a, a liability insurance uh, policy, and it was coming on a huge uh, catastrophic insurance policy. But we were still paying like, I want to say two hundred fifty dollars or $300,000 a year for that catastrophic policy, and then paying everything out of pocket. Well now, we got rid of that program, so we didn't take out, we we're gonna take out $2.8 million of the, uh, bonds, I guess, for that. We, we didn't do that, and we refinanced the ones that were outstanding for the previous program, and we went to a new program. We're paying for it entirely out of the operating accounts, so out of the general fund. And it is $333,000 a year, I think, this year, but it is full insurance, so we have almost nothing out of pocket, and we retired the bond. So that bond is going to expire in 2027, I want to say. So the account will be completely debt-free other than the courthouse bonds by 2027. What is, what is the uh, percent of... Uh 
of uh, what are we at seven and a half percent in Union County? Sales tax. Sales tax. Sales tax. Yeah, it's seven and a half percent. All right. What percent of that is uh, goes to the county? So five percent goes to the state. Okay. Um, of that, some of that will come back in front of that sales tax that we get. You know, five percent goes to the state. The income tax. Five percent goes to the state. One uh, percent goes to. You know what? I have this in the well, had, I know you had some that we passed a few years ago for the sheriff's office. I remember that. I mean, I don't know that had been too many years ago. It was one quarter percent or... There's a quarter percent that goes to public safety. And there is a um, one percent that comes to the county for the facility. So the answer is one percent. It's a one percent sales tax. That's, it's, a, yeah. it's a penny sales tax. But I want to show you the breakdown of what it all is. This is part of another presentation. This is the one that I gave to the uh, Chamber of Commerce, which would be another one I can give here sometime. In fact, I already had it. It's Google Sheets. If it'll look, we'll get there. So the answer is 2.5% stays locally and 5% goes to the state. There's a quarter percent countywide that comes to the county. That's everywhere. Quarter percent comes to the county, 1% that goes to the location that the, that the item was purchased in. So let's say let's say you go to Walmart and you buy something. Of your sales tax, 7.5% uh, 7, 7 sales tax, 5% goes to the county, or to, sorry, to the state. Right. 1% goes to Anna because you're in the Anna city limits. A quarter percent comes to, ah, I got it. I don't know why that's there though. That's the one I want. Can you see that? Where's my present button? There we go. Okay, that's good. 5% goes to the state, 1% goes to the goes to the municipality, so wherever it's purchased. If you're in the city of Anna, it's going to the city of Anna. If you're outside the city limits, right. it's going to come to the county. If you're in Cobden, it's going to go to Cobden. A quarter percent goes to the county no matter what. It doesn't matter where it's purchased, it's going to come to the county anyway. That's just a county-wide sales tax. That's state statute. That's how it's going to happen. These two are levied effectively by the county. The county elected to have these. Those can come off. And the minimum tax rate uh, you're going to pay in Illinois is six point two five percent. No matter where you go, you're going to pay six point two five percent. This one point two five is added because the county says we need it. So the one percent is a facility sales tax that's going to pay for the courthouse, and there's a quarter percent that goes for public safety. So generally for us, it goes to pay for the sheriff's office. Our well, sheriff's really not much coming to the county actually. No, it goes goes to the yeah. If if you're outside of the if you're outside the city limits, then two and a half percent. Two and a half percent. We don't have that much revenue coming in outside. Exactly. A lot cities. Of, I mean, a lot of your um, wineries. Well, the wineries, of course. But that's most and unincorporated of the, areas like Wolf Lake. Yep. Or where or wherever. And I don't. There's much sales down in there anymore. Well, so you got Schaefer's, and that's that's pretty much it. Is the border is it out of count out of the city now, I think or it's is it in the, the city? It's out of the city limits. Okay. I mean, exactly. there's some things like that that help you generate. Here and there, yep. Um, but, you know, Walmart's a big generator, and that's why Anna gets so much of it. They're getting one percent of that. Um, the county gets a quarter percent of everything that's. That's why there's a big fight whenever the new one went in in Jackson County. Oh right. Yeah, because of where it was located, it could went to Murfreesboro or Carbondale. Yeah, Carbondale, yep. There was a battle over that. Yeah. Uh, my thinking is, I don't know, is it can it can it be a uh, sales tax be increased to help? With, with this or not? It could if you want to pay more money, if you want to pay more taxes. Well, I, to me, that's the most fair tax that you can have. It's, you, don't spend, you don't pay if you spend it. It's going, I mean, if you, if you spend it in the county, it's going to help the county. And we're probably one of the lowest counties as far as sales tax in, in, in Illinois right now, other than maybe There's your South comparison. Area. There's your comparison. If you buy Union County, you're going to pay 7.5%. If you go to Carbon, you're going to pay 95 Caves at 8, Marin at 8.75, Paducah is where you need to go. <laughs> Not really, but Paducah's down at 6, and that's why you see a lot of people moving to states like Indiana, Kentucky. They're low tax states. They're fine with that for government. But if we, if we increased, let's say, a half percent in total in sales tax, how much would that help the county? Oh, significantly, but for what? 
Well, I mean, to put in our budget to take care of all these expenses where we're going to have all our deficits. So there's two ways to look at that, though. So do you want to just pay more and have those things that are in there that may be efficient or may not well, be efficient? Well, you've, you've got to either increase revenue or you've got to cut expenses, one or the other. Exactly. That's the only way you're going you gotta, to you got to pay for it, so you're exactly right. But I would contend, I, I would be hesitant to raise taxes if we didn't have to. I think this okay. is a selling point for us, whether or not we do it, that we're a low tax area. I certainly want to, wouldn't want to go through the mark, uh, match Carbondale because at that point, why not go to Carbondale and buy your stuff? Right, I understand that. Now, if you wanted to say raise it 1% uh, because you want to have better schools and there's a targeted plan for what the schools are going to do with that, that's what Carterville did. Carterville raised uh, 1% and it was to build a school and to fund education. What's happening is you're seeing tons of people pouring into Carterville to live, uh, to live there because they want the good school district. Now, you throw the money there, it doesn't mean it's going to be well spent. You know what? I don't know how many people look at taxes, I mean, sales tax as a reason why they go to where they buy. I'm not sure that really most people they don't realize. They don't have any idea. I mean, you pay whatever the tax rate is. If, I, if I'm going to go to Marion and I'm going to go to Menards, whatever the tax rate is, that's what I do because that's what they offer. There's no other Menards. Huh? <laughs> There's no other Menards. We can go to Cape, I guess, but yeah. And, yeah, you're, you're going away. You're, you're, you're not going to go to Menards because it doesn't but, exist. <laughs> but all I'm saying is the sales tax is, is, is something that is equal to everybody. If you, if you raise taxes based on, on real estate, then it only gets the people that owns real estate and, it, it, and the rest of the people rise. Absolutely true. And, and that's the biggest issue I have between, you know, looking at, at, at generating revenue is real estate is a killer for people that own property. Mm -hmm. It's a deterrent for them to build a new home. And, and I mean, I mean, I, my taxes in the last seven years is crippled in my real estate. Now I have, I have made some improvements and I built some things, but doggone it, that's a lot of money. Darren, why don't you touch a little bit in a, when you talk to us about the new home, you know, one, one, one way to change this a little bit is, is an influx of, of new people, new mm -hmm. homes. Uh, yeah. Of course, along with that goes, uh, you know, jobs for those people or